The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Leela! Well, come on in. Oh, hello, Judge. What brings you here so early in the morning? It isn't particularly early for most people. Leela and I have a little business to discuss with you. Well, sit down then. Here, Leela, you take the sofa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, what's this all about? Well, I brought Leela here this morning, Throckmorton, to ask your help in hammering a little sense into her. Wow. <laughs> you couldn't have made a worse beginning, Horace. What is it he wants you to be sensible about, Leela? Money. You know that money I got from that old stock of Beauregard? Doesn't amount to as much as I'd hoped of cost, but then I didn't think it would. Be that as it may, Leela, the sum is substantial enough to be invested, rather than frittered away on knickknacks and finery. Finery? Throckmorton, I've hardly got a stitch of clothes I'm not ashamed to be seen in. Oh, now, Leela, I was just going to say, I think that's a very neat little outfit you're wearing there. <laughs> do you, uh, do you really like it, Throckmorton? I really do. Cute blouse. <laughs> oh, you should see the dinner dress I bought. <laughs> it has bows all down the front. See, I'd like to see that. <laughs> huh? I hesitate to interrupt this touching exchange, but I'm a busy man. I can only devote a certain amount of time to this discussion. Now, the fact is that if Leela will invest this windfall in annuities... It can be a great comfort to her later on. Well, how much will it bring in, Judge? Well, roughly around $17 a month. Yeah. Isn't that simply ridiculous, Throckmorton? What on earth could I do with $17 a month? She can't live on that, Judge. Of course not. But added to her other income, it may someday prevent her becoming a burden on her family. I have no intention of becoming a burden on anyone, especially on my own family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The trouble with annuities, though, Judge, is that you have to wait so long for them. That all depends. I was figuring this one to start paying Leela at uh, age 60. Now, that wouldn't be... Horace, I will ask you to remember that I am only 32. Oh, now, dear. <laughs> Old age is something we've got to face. Why not make up your mind to it? I'll face it when it arrives, but not before. I'm certainly not going to rush ahead of myself looking for it. That's reasonable, Horace. It's nothing of the kind. The trouble with you two is, just because old age seems disagreeable, you haven't got the courage to face it. But I'm realistic. I'm facing it squarely. You're looking it right in the eye, brother. <laughs> and it's looking right back at you. I'm only 55. Well, if a man of 55 doesn't start thinking about old age, it's because he's too old to think at all. Now, Leela and I are something else again. Well, you're a couple of idiots if you ask me. What? Listen, Judge, just because you're beginning to run down, there's no reason to expect everybody else to do the same. You want everybody else to act like a tired old goat just because you do. I beg your pardon? I think it'll do Leela good to get out and spend a little money, buy a few things, then maybe invest the balance. Now, that sounds really sensible, if there's any left over. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you decide to make your investments, Leela, you may consult Mr. Gildersleeve with respect thereto. I came to advise, and I've been insulted. Good day. Oh, now, Horace, don't get sore. I'm not sore. I'm merely disgusted. No, no, don't bother to show me out. Good day, Leela. You aren't mad, are you, Horace? Ha! Ah. Oh! Oh, well, we needed a new door anyway. <laughs> Leela, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What? You're looking so darn cute, I'm going to insist on your coming to dinner this evening. We're having roast pork. Oh, Throckmorton, you're a darling. Must I wear my new dinner dress with the bows all down the front? Absolutely. (laughs) 
More coffee, Leela? I'll still have some, thank you. How about another piece of Bertie's delicious lemon pie? Oh, I couldn't. It's awfully good, Bertie. It turned out pretty good at that. I could go for another slice, Aunt. <laughs> I bet you could. Uh, Marjorie? No, thanks. You might just put it in the icebox, Bertie. I may look in on it later. Yes, sir. Hey, Aunt, can I go to the movies with Marge and Ben? What? You may not, Leroy. I wouldn't have to sit with them. Leroy, it shouldn't be necessary to have this argument with you every time your sister goes to a movie. You know your bedtime. But it always stays the same. Gosh, even a kid can grow up, you know. I'm watching you carefully for signs of it. <laughs> what, uh, what picture are you going to, Margaret? Dink Stevens. Have you seen it? No. Who's in it? Who's in it? Dink Stevens. He's it. The title of it is Kiss Me Hello, I think, but it doesn't matter. Haven't you seen Dink Stevens? I don't believe so. Have you, Throckmorton? Never heard of him. What happened to Vanny or Bunny or whoever it was? I thought he was all the rage. <laughs> you mean Van Johnson? Or do you mean Sonny Tuck? How should I know who I mean? Well, I used to like them. They're all right. But Dinky, he's like Bob Walker, only he has freckles. And his nose is cuter. Mm, I like Gregory Peck. Sure, he's all right. Has this uh, new fellow got any particular talent, may I ask? Does he sing, dance, juggle? Why should he? Everyone is simply crazy about him. Oh, but why? What can he do? What's his big secret? He wears his hat on the side of his head and chews grass. <laughs> oh, well, that doesn't sound so wonderful. You have to see him. Oh, there's Ben. I'll let him in, huh? Yeah, bring him into the dining room, my boy. Perhaps he'd like a cup of coffee. Okay. I don't think I have time for a cup of coffee. Marge and I are going to catch the early show. Come on in, Ben. Oh, everybody in there? Good evening, Mr. Gillisleeve. Uh, hello, Miss Ransom. Hi, Marge. Hello. Good evening, Ben. Uh, pull up a chair, why don't you? Well, I don't know. Marge and I were going to the movies. Going to see somebody named Dink Stevens, I understand. Shoes his cud, Marjorie tells me. <laughs> huh? Leroy told Unky about that picture where Dink was chewing on a blade of grass all the time, remember? Oh, yeah. Didn't even take it out when he kissed her. <laughs> <laughs> he's quite a guy. I can't say I'd be particularly crazy about that. Oh, well, he's not... It's not the kind of a picture that would appeal to old folks. Old folks? Well, my mom didn't like it either. Hey, you better get your hat and coat, huh, Marge? Yes, I guess I'd better. Will you excuse us, Unky, Mrs. Ransom? Oh, certainly. Hey, wait a minute, Ben. I want to show you something before you go. Oh, we can't, Leroy. We have to rush. Come on, Ben, and we'll miss the cartoon. Good night, Mrs. Ransom. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night. Have a good time. We will. You have a good time, too. We'll have a good time, all right. Don't worry about us, eh, Leela? <laughs> Leela, what's the matter? Nothing. Oh, that's good. I thought maybe... Leela, what is it? Oh, Throckmorton, Horace was right. Hooker was right? About what? About me getting old. I am. I'm not 32, Throckmorton. I'm... I'm 36. Hmm. Well, what of it? Who said 36 was old? Well, you heard Ben just now. He thinks of us as old folks. Now, Leela, Ben didn't mean to hurt your feelings. He's just thoughtless. Why, gosh, 36... <laughs> I'm 37. <laughs> well, even 37. Look, I'm 42. But you know something? I always think of you as much younger than I am. I'm five years younger. I think of you as much younger than that. I think of you as being, well, too young for me. Oh, do you, Throckmorton? You bet. Why, sometimes when I take you out, I'm afraid people will say, look at that fellow robbing the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> That's really a fact, Leela. Tell you what, mm -hmm. if you're not ashamed to be seen in public with a fella twice your age... Oh, silly. Why don't we run down to the Majestic and see this picture with Dink Stevens, huh? Maybe we can figure out what causes the craze. Why, well, if you want to... Sure, it. if the kids enjoy him, he must have something. If he's got anything, we can enjoy it, too. After all, there's a little bit of kid in everybody, isn't there? Let's go and see. <laughs> <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be back in a few moments. Mr. Lang, there seems to be quite a difference in spreads for bread. Indeed there is, especially in flavor. 
I do my best to point that out every time I talk about parquet margarine. Well, until I changed to parquet margarine some time ago, I noticed that my family wasn't too enthusiastic about some of the spreads I'd been serving. But now you're steady users of parquet margarine, I take it. <laughs> yes, we are. I serve it at every meal. Because on hot toast for breakfast, or on bread and rolls for lunch and dinner, it, oh, it always tastes just right. Well, that's what millions of families have discovered. Parquet's unmatched flavor has made it one of America's favorite spreads for bread. And it's surprising how economical parquet is. Yes, it's only about half the price of costly spreads. And along with parquet's fresh, satisfying flavor, you can always be sure of getting an abundant supply of nourishment. Parquet is one of the finest energy foods you can serve. And it's also fortified with important vitamin A. So if you haven't changed to parquet margarine yet, now is a good time to do it. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to Gildersleeve and his old friend and neighbor, Leela Ransom whose search for their youth has led them to the loges at the Majestic Theater. There they sit, surrounded by all the young things of Summerfield. Leela primly with her coat thrown over the back of her seat. Gildersleeve hunkered down with his coat piled on his lap and his head sagging on his chest. Throckmorton! <laughs> On the screen, Dink Stevens, clad in bathing trunks, has just flopped down on the sand, nose to nose with Linda somebody. They look into each other's eyes. Happy. Uh-huh. Me too. Skinny little guy, isn't he? Oh, I don't know. His ears stick out. Shh. Look. Seagull. Yeah. It's a wonder she wouldn't wear some clothes. Oh, I don't know. Quiet. <laughs> you know something? What? You're pretty. <laughs> I'll bet you say that to all the girls. This is the dullest picture I ever saw. Right, Martin. But nothing happens. Tell me something. What? Where'd you get those big blue eyes? Oh, brother. <laughs> and that cute little turned-up nose. The great lover. <laughs> you know what you need? What? A good big kiss. <laughs> you can't catch me. So help me if he chases her, I'm walking right out of here. <laughs> there he goes. She isn't even trying. Look at that, Leela, hugging and kissing. <laughs> Leela, you enjoying this? Are you? I asked you first. Do you suppose it would be terrible if we laughed? <laughs> oh, shush yourself. Come on, Leela. <laughs> What's wrong? What do you mean? Well, it, it seems like I don't enjoy movies much anymore, somehow. Well, now anybody could enjoy that movie. If you ask me, the whole picture was childish and idiotic. Well, people all around us seem to be enjoying it. Children and idiots. <sighs> I'm afraid we're getting older, Throckmorton. That's all. Maybe the movies are just getting worse. Did you ever think of that, Leela? Come on, let's get a soda or something. I may even have a banana split. Uh, 
And Mrs. Ransom. Well, well. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Peavy, my lads, you've got customers here for a couple of banana splits. Set them up. Mr. Gildersleeve, didn't you hear about bananas? What about them? There aren't any. <laughs> oh, nuts. Now that you mention it, I'm out of nuts, too. <laughs> what have you got? Well, that's the question. I have the plain vanilla ice cream. Is that all you got? I guess that's about the gist of it. <laughs> Leela, what do you have? Well, I believe what I'd like is hot chocolate. Uh, that is, if you have... Now, hot chocolate, I've got. I keep it ready on the burner here at all times. It's a good cold weather drink. I even like to take a little nip now and then myself. <laughs> that's when nobody's looking. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, how about you? Oh, give me the same. I had my heart set on a banana split, though. You sleep better on a hot chocolate. <laughs> Seems to be quite a seasonal item, hot chocolate. Now, in winter, for instance, I, I sell quite a bit of it. In the spring, I don't sell too much. And in summer, I sell even less. <laughs> I'll go farther than that. I'll say I don't sell any. <laughs> yes, yes. Then in the fall again, the sales begin to pick up a little. And in the winter... You sell more. Uh, that's right. <laughs> there you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Careful, it's hot. <laughs> you folks been to the movies, have you? We've just come from my Kiss Me Hello. Mrs. Peavy and I saw it Sunday night. Good picture. We thought it was a terrible picture. Well, it wasn't so much when you come right down to it. Wasn't so much. It was no good at all. You're right. It was no good at all. <laughs> and why do you tell us it was good? Well, every man's entitled to his opinion. <laughs> all right. It but... wasn't my opinion, but I thought it might be yours. <laughs> I don't pretend to know anything about pictures anyway. Mrs. Peavy and I very seldom go. What do you do, uh, you and Mrs. Peavy? Do? Yes. Tell us something, Peavy. You're getting pretty well along in years. Tell us. What's it like? What's what like? <laughs> to be, well, you know, to be getting along. Uh, to be... To be old? Yes. It's a darn nuisance. <laughs> But there's one thing about it. Oh, what's that? It could be worse. Oh, how do you mean? Well, if I weren't married. Uh, happily married, that is. Well, if you've got someone to grow old with, it, it isn't so bad. Maybe you're right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, say, Peavy. Yes? Uh, <laughs> forgot what I was going to ask you. Go ahead, go ahead. I remember as a young fellow, I... I used to dread growing old when I thought about it at all. But now that I'm there, well, it's kind of pleasant. Mrs. Peavy and I, we have our evenings at home together. That's when I'm not down here at the shop. Sometimes we play Chinese checkers or we may read aloud to each other from some book. Uh, you know, people ought to do more of that kind of thing. It's really strange. After all, what does a man want? To go around raising Ned forever? <laughs> Peavy, by George, you're the only man in this whole town who knows what it's all about. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Leela, getting on towards bedtime. Good night, Peavy. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Ransom. Good night, Mr. Peavy, and thank you for having changed my whole life. Well, did I do that? <laughs> Leroy, I want you to pick up this junk and get it out of here. Mrs. Ransom. Again? She was over last night. I know that. Doorbell, Bertie. Ah! Hello, Leela. Let me take your things. I'll take them. Here, aren't you sit here. Make yourself comfortable. I'll sit over by the fire. Yes, now, Leroy, I'm afraid it's your bedtime, my boy. Oh, I'm going to have to. Can't I just watch 
watch the fire a little. Oh, yes, Rock Martin. Do let him stay down a while. But, Leela, I thought we were going to, you know, spend the family evening. Read aloud to each other. Well, why not read something Leroy would enjoy, too? Yeah. Well, that's an idea. <laughs> it would make it more of a family evening having children around. Well, why don't we read? I've got a super comic book, Murder Comics. <laughs> I just started it. There'll be none of that. What about one of those nice books you got for Christmas? They were fairly grown up, some of them. Which one? Anyone. What was the book your Aunt Hattie sent you? I never heard of it. The name of it is Pickwick Papers. Pickwick Papers. My boy, that's a classic. Yeah? Dickens. Dickens' famous and beloved story. Why, Pickwick Papers is one of the funniest books ever written. I've always been intending to read Pickwick Papers. Ideal book to read aloud. Where's the book, Leroy? I don't know. It was around here somewhere. Only four weeks since Christmas and you've lost it already? Bet you haven't even written to thank your aunt for it. Leroy, if you'd I only learn... it. Yeah, here it is, Uncle. Oh, yes. Well, handsomely bound volume with illustrations. Look, here's Sam Weller. Who's he? One of the characters. Great character. One of Dickens' greatest creations. What did he do? Well, you find out as we get into the story. <laughs> you see, Leroy. Go ahead, Throckmorton. Let's see now. Where does it begin? Uh, here we are. Chapter one. The Pickwickians. You comfortable? You bet. Leela? Mm-hmm. I'll just curl up here like a kitten. This is such fun. Go ahead. All right. Hi, George. I'm glad I thought of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, first ray of light which illumines the gloom and converts into a dazzling brilliancy that obscurity in which the earlier history of the public career of the immortal Pickwick would appear to be involved is derived from the perusal of the following entry... <laughs> In the transactions of the Pickwick Club, which the editors of these papers feel the highest pleasure in laying before his readers as a proof of the careful attention, indefatigable assiduity, and nice discrimination with which his search among the multifarious documents confided to him has been conducted. Yep, it's classic, all right. <laughs> Bed. Why, Leroy, I've only read one sentence. Yeah, and it was a pip. <laughs> I thought you said it was funny. It is funny. You should listen to Abbott and Costello a few times. They're really funny. Who's on second base? No, no, who's on first? Leroy, go to bed. Now, let me catch you listening to that radio again. You read every word of this book. To myself? To yourself. Now, go to bed and go to sleep. Say good night to Mrs. Ransom. Good night, Leroy. Good night, Mrs. Ransom. I'll be seeing you. I'm sorry you can't stay down and enjoy the book with us, but... Well, uh, you know how it is. Have to get started early in the morning. School and everything, so better say good night. Good night. Night, Uncle. Good night, Leroy. Darn kid, radio, comic books, Abbott and Costello. What kind of a world do they live in? Well, start over here again. <clears throat> the first ray of light which illumines the gloom and converts into a dazzling brilliancy, that obscurity in which... Shock, Mart. Yes, Leela? Uh... Let's not read any more tonight, Throckmorton. Your eyes must be tired. Let's just sit here and talk, shall we? Well, sure, if you'd rather. What will we talk about? Let's talk about life. Okay. You know, I've been thinking ever since we had that talk with Mr. Peavy last night. I've been thinking a lot. And I've decided there are certain things in life you just have to face... And once you face them, you feel a lot better. I felt better all day. What kind of things, Leela? You mean growing old? Well, not just that, but, well, every girl believes that someday a prince charming will come into her life. A, a perfect knight who will sweep off her feet and carry away with him to a life of eternal bliss. Yeah, well... But sooner or later, there comes a day when she has to face the fact that Prince Charming isn't coming, ever. And that she'd do much better just to, to settle down with some nice person who's kind and, and thoughtful and sort of comfortable to have around. Someone like you, Throckmorton. I see. Well, you may be right. Of course you're right. We're not chickens anymore, either one of us. Why don't we act our age? That's right. Like P.V. said, growing old isn't so bad if you have somebody to grow old with. Someone to spend your evenings with. And we have a lot of things in common, Throckmorton. Our love of good books, for instance. Pickwick papers. That ought to hold us for a couple of years. And, and music. You sing and I can play. Why, well, we could spend whole evenings at the piano. Play something now, Leela. Uh, what would you like me to play? I don't know. Something restful. But what? 
Oh, anything. Just let me sit here by the fire and close my eyes and you play for me. I don't see much fun in that. I'll tell you. I'll play for you if you sing. Oh, but I'm tired, Leela. I've had a hard day at the office, and I'm not as young as I was once. Oh, now, it won't do you any harm to come over here and sing. It will do you good. All right. Well, what do you want me to sing? Huh? What would you like to sing? What do you want me to sing? We could spend a couple of years this way, too. <laughs> Rock, Martin. One of the important things in growing old gracefully is to learn to give in gracefully to the wishes of the other person. Now, sing something pretty for Lena. Darling, I am growing old. Oh, not, not that, Rock Martin, please. Why not? It's a fact, isn't it? We agreed we were going to act our age. Well, let's face it. Come on. That's it. La, la, la. I'd forgotten that one. We used to sing that when we were younger. Remember? Just a little love, a little kiss. Just an hour that holds a world of bliss. As I hold you fast and bend above. Leela. Oh, Rock Martin, act your age. A man's as old as he feels, Leela, and right now I feel great. Yoo-hoo! What's <laughs> Rock Martin? <laughs> Maybe we're not as old as we think we are, Leela. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. I'd like to suggest again that no matter what spread for bread you've been serving in the past, one taste of parquet margarine should prove to your family why millions prefer it to any other brand. Parquet's fresh, delicate flavor makes breads of all kinds taste extra good. You'll discover there's a difference both in smooth spreading texture and in flavor. And that's because Kraft takes such special care in blending the fine, wholesome farm products that are used in producing parquet. So be sure to compare parquet's fresh, dairy-like flavor with any spread for bread you may have used in the past. See for yourself how delighted your family will be with this spread that tastes so good. Ask your dealer for delicious, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Good night, Rock Martin. I've had a lovely time. So have I, Leela. Well, good night. Good night. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekham. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Looking for something special in mustard? Be sure to try Kraft Salad Mustard. This tangy golden salad mustard is prepared to Kraft's own special recipe. It's made of choice mustard seed, mild vinegar, and fragrant spices. Has just the right touch of flavor you need for pepping up cooked dishes, gravies, sandwich spreads, cheese fondues, Welsh rabbits, and fish. So for extra flavor in so many appetizing ways, buy Kraft salad mustard. And pick up a jar of Kraft horseradish mustard, too, on your next shopping trip. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.